All right, guys, this next one's kind of a check nymph type pattern with a tungsten bead. Uh, it's going to help it sink real quick in that uh, fast type of water. This is a great uh, uh, point fly or anchor fly to help uh, hold that smaller fly down on the bottom. And we're going to use a product called net back foil for the back there. You can see it has a little sort of a net type uh, pattern on it. So let's get started on this one. Got a size 12 here. Um, this is our European barless um, check nymph hook with the upturn point. So we got a tungsten bead on here, but we're going to add a little bit more weight and uh, just kind of shape that body with our uh, flat lead wire again. So again, just start here down near the bend and just work that forward, touching turns right up here against the bead. And you can just uh, kind of break that off. Break that tag end off, roll that little tag end out of the way. Just go with the second layer here. Again, just depends on how heavy you want the fly, how big you want the fly to look. You know, these check nymphs shouldn't be too too big and bulky, but at the same time, you know, we tie these with all different types of weight. Um, so we have that option on the river, you know, a light, a medium, and a heavy fly, uh, depending on the conditions. So there's our uh, our body with the flat lead wire. Just come in here with our thread, and all we're going to do is just uh, cover this up, just again to secure it, but also to maintain and build up that profile. Again, with that traditional round lead, you have those big kind of stumpy ends at each at each end. You got to fill in and, and just sit there and waste a lot of thread. So with this flat lead wire, you get a nice tapered profile. You don't have to waste too much time at each end there. All right, so we got that covered up pretty well. We don't have to cover it completely. Now for the ribbing on this, we're just going to use some monofilament. So I'm just going to take some old, uh, you know, whatever, three, four pound mono. And again, just tie that kind of right behind the bead there. This stuff's pretty slippery, so you want to get it tied in pretty well. And just work that back it'll kind of tuck itself underneath out of the way work that back right onto the bare hook shank all right let's fill in a little gap here all right now about right here just above where that mono is tied in that ribbing we're going to use um, this is the the net back foil comes on a sheet uh, this is the dark brown comes in four or five other colors so all I'm going to do here is just cut off a strip. Um, you know, you can just cut it off depending on the width and what you need. And what I'm just going to do here is is cut a little sort of an arrow point in one end. Um, just helps me tie that in. Um, really doesn't matter which side. One side's a little shinier than the other. So again, I'm just going to trap that that little point that I just made right there on top some pretty good tight wraps and just stretch that slightly as you work your thread back sort of down onto the bare part of the hook without any of that lead there again maintain that profile I like to t tilt this a little bit more working down at that end of the hook right now for dubbing just gonna use a uh, I really like this the check nymph dubbing in the light olive and we don't need much here so we're just gonna Kind of add a little bit at a time, just spin that right on the thread. And just, again, we want to maintain that taper, so we don't want to put too much right here at the end. And just work our way forward and just, I like to do it in stages, just add a little bit at a time rather than trying to, you know, put all that dubbing onto your thread and hope that you have the right amount when you, when you finish. So I just do it in, in a couple little stages. And again, just, just kind of build that up. Again, this will be covered by the shell back, so got to keep that in mind too. All right, that's probably enough for the body. Now, I put in a little hot spot, so I'll just use like a, a bright, like an ice dubbing, something in that same kind of orange range, but something that's got a little bit more flash to it. Um, I like to add these hot spots on a lot of the flies. And again, you can tie this, you know, a caddis green color would be great. 
for the body and then and then a little chartreuse dubbing for the hot spot or mix it up pink is a great color as well all right we might just need a little bit more there again just try to keep everything even so when that shell back comes over there's no big gaps there we go so it's still we still got a nice little gap here but behind the bead we're going to fill in with the dark dubbing now to simulate the head of the caddis um, now since I want that a little bulkier rather than spin that on the thread I'm going to create a dubbing loop and then I'll put the dubbing into that dubbing loop so I can pick it out a little bit better so we're just going to create a loop here with our thread and we're going to use our uh, this is our dub dubbing twisting tool real great spins like crazy um, makes it a lot easier so once we got our dubbing prepared we're just going to insert that into the loop just kind of spread it out make it a little even and just make a few slow turns at first so it doesn't all fly out of there pick out any kind of lumps there make it even and it just takes a couple quick turns you can wrap that and come back a couple turns come back forward you want to build this up pretty good and get one more in there right behind the bead and then just tie this off remove that excess now we don't need this dubbing on the top again because we're gonna pull that shell back over so what I come come in here and just kinda trim trim off any of the dubbing right here on top because we just want it underneath for the legs just keep it even all right, now we can take our shell back and just sort of keep that centered. You don't have to apply too much tension on it. Just pull it over. It'll kind of mold itself right around the fly. And just drop your thread over. What I like to do is let go of that so I can really pull down. I get a couple wraps behind the bead. Pull that shell back back. And then get one or two to really sink down in there. Now that's not going to come loose. And I can just come around here, a couple small cuts, and kind of follow that profile of the bead. Trim that off. Now at this point, just for security and to help me with the ribbing, I like to put on one or two whip finishes right here. And how that helps me at least is uh, when I angle this forward to start the ribbing, now this thread's not going to slip off. All right, so here's our Here's just our mono rib. That first turn is going to be on the bear hook itself. And I just use, you can use your nail to just kind of set that first first wrap. Again, this is for some durability on the fly. Keep it all together. Keep that shell back from rotating. And once I get into the middle, I can just pinch that and readjust that hook in the device. We're just going to come right up through the thorax area. And then right up behind the bead. Since this again, this monofilament is pretty slippery stuff. I want to get a lot of wraps up here and make sure it's not going to slip out. Couple behind, couple in front. Remove that mono, and now just whip finish and build up that little darker area behind the bead. Now we can remove that thread, and we can come in here and just kind of. I just take the point of the scissors and just kind of pick out some of the that dubbing and just to kind of make it a little bit more buggy again we're trying to mimic the little legs of the caddis here and trim off any fibers that aren't behaving here All right now again I like to use that uh, the UV Deer Creek UV resin just to fill in that little gap behind the bead and lock that lock that thread down so it's not going to take much just right in there to fill that gap there that's all it takes just a little bit take our UV light and just cure that it won't take more than two or three seconds because it's pretty thin alright done 
tack free ready to go so there's a kind of a check nymph tungsten beadhead check nymph version with the net back foil again comes in several colors and you can tie it up and uh, definitely definitely catch some fish with this guy okay thanks